Yeah, thanks all for your uh, patience with the long lab session yesterday. Um, so today is just a 50 minute class. And um, what I'm gonna do is uh, give you about 20 minutes on um, the, um, uh, the GPS um, technique, which I really consider to be an electromagnetic uh, geophysical technique. Um, it's not that it's sounding the earth, but it's so fundamental to everything we do when it relies on the same uh, physical principles and the same electromagnetic principles uh, that I think it's kind of a good introduction to uh, electromagnetics. Um, so here, our, our, um, uh, our emphasis is not going to be on the properties of rocks below our feet, but on the shape of the Earth's surface and the exact configuration and location of different points on the Earth's surface. So, um, and of course, uh, GPS is so pervasive these days in everything we do, you know, without... Uh, accurate GPS, our, um, our cell phones wouldn't work. Um, our, uh, probably even the cable internet would not work. Um, so just about everything uh, we do um, uh, is uh, very dependent. And it's uh, really critical uh, that we're gonna be relying on it in many cases uh, so thoroughly that we, we understand it and it's something as uh, engineers and, and geophysicists, uh, we're really able, we've been prepared to understand the nuances of, um, of GPS. So um, again, uh, we're, we're using GPS uh, for um, navigation, mapping, surveying, getting the, the physical shape of the earth. So it's, uh, it, and, and, and in fact, we can even track uh, tectonic movements uh, with it. Um, and there's a, a big group, uh, the, the Nevada Geodetic Lab, over in the, the Bureau of Mines and Geology, uh, with several uh, geophysics professors there. And they, um, uh, that's their specialty. Uh, they're able to track such things as um, the uplift of the Sierra Nevada resulting from over pumping of groundwater in the um, Central Valley of California for agricultural purposes. Uh, they're able to track, uh, you know, two centimeter annual changes in the location of Earth's center of mass um, due to the uh, low, the mass of snow in the northern hemisphere um, during the winter, during the northern hemisphere winter. Uh, so the, the, the precision uh, and the planetary coverage of GPS is just unbelievably good. Um, and uh, uh, our, our professors here uh, in the Nevada Geodetic Lab have really been at the forefront of that. So I, I want to recognize that uh, by uh, including GPS formally as a geophysical technique. Yeah, they're, they're big shots. We got some big shots over there. Yeah, they, they, are, uh, they are very famous. Um, one thing I, I can highly recommend to those of you who are thinking about taking more classes here, either as a... Uh, uh, as an undergraduate or a graduate, is uh, look, look for um, uh, Dr. Blewett's um, class in the physics of GPS. He, he uh, gives that out of the physics department, uh, but it's, uh, it's one that uh, you all are, are prepared to do. You've had the math um, that's necessary. You've had the physics that's necessary. Um, and uh, that is a class that you cannot get anywhere else. Um, uh, Blewett is, a, is, a, is, a, is an inventor, an innovator, an entrepreneur, um, an amazing, um, you know, um, hard-headed scientist. Um, and uh, he has been, uh, uh, he's developed and, and also marketed a, a number of really innovative uh, GPS technologies. So um, uh, that class is, uh, you know, one of the best that you could take. It's not easy, of course, uh, but it's one of the best classes you could take uh, in the whole university. All right. So um, uh, we, we're going to use GPS for uh, lots, of, uh, uh, lots of reasons, uh, determining our position, getting from one location to another, 
creating maps, uh, not just of the world, but just of Manzanita Bowl. EPS is very useful for doing that. Monitoring the movement of, of people and things. Um, you know, uh, my, uh, uh, my car, uh, its GPS is out now and I gotta go get it fixed. Uh, and it's uh, important enough for even for me to do that in the, in the middle of this uh, coronavirus crisis. Um, and uh, the other thing that, uh, that we, th maybe the thing that we rely on most widely from GPS is um, uh, providing precise timing. Uh, there used to be um, radio, uh, audio and uh, digital radio signals that uh, uh, were monitored worldwide for precise timing. And those were only accurate to the millisecond level. Now with GPS, we can get, um, you know, worldwide accurate, um, uh, and, and, and this is really, you know, yeah. relativistic level timing uh, to an accuracy of nanoseconds. Is there a comment there? You know, comments and questions are welcome. Okay. Now, um, for, for uh, really accurate um, locations and elevations, you know, uh, one element of a location is, is the elevation. Uh, we have to go to what's called differential GPS, which is exactly what we use for the highly accurate um, elevations that we require for uh, gravity work and our, our gravity uh, elevation reduction um, uh, procedures. Uh, so so uh, there's a, an elaboration to uh, GPS, which is also very common um, that, uh, and is used you know, every day by uh, uh, thousands of surveyors. Um, and it's called differential GPS. And it requires the simultaneous operation of two receivers. So you have a stationary uh, base station uh, receiver and you have a, um, uh, a roving uh, or working receiver, okay? That's actually making the, the measurements. And, and the, um, uh, you get a real time transmission of, um, of information between those two receivers. And there's several ways of doing that. Um, uh, we use a, uh, a Trimble branded um, uh, service uh, for that. Um, but we also have the capability of setting up our own um, uh, base and, uh, and roving uh, GPS receivers. Um, another thing that's used for very high accuracy um, um, uh, GPS positioning is called uh, uh, dual frequency and uh, phase differential GPS, uh, carrier phase uh, um, analysis. And the distance is based uh, not on uh, what we'll find out as the typical GPS point positioning, um, but on uh, carrier signal phase. <clears throat> so um, uh, after uh, the three lectures I'm gonna give on, uh, on GPS, um, these are the questions you'll be able to answer. Um, and, uh, you know, personal are, uh, GPS receivers in your phone, they're very, very good, but they're not quite survey grade. Um, and, uh, and so what are the differences? How do you get to survey grade? Uh, what do you have to measure uh, when you're doing survey grade work? Uh, and uh, in particular then, um, uh, what do you have to um, uh, process either uh, you know, with a live link, a live kinematic link, or uh, in post-processing after you get back to the office? And um, why do you have to uh, collect GPS data for so long? Uh, your uh, distance accuracy is related to uh, how much data you collect, the length of the analyzed uh, waveform. Um, what, is, uh, what are the ambiguities and problems that you can get? And then how do you design uh, GPS surveys for various types of applications. So uh, here's how GPS works. Um, we have uh, precisely timed radio transmissions from an, a large number of satellites. I think there's 26 in the US. Uh, the US, uh, it's probably in the Space Force now. Uh, used to be in the Air Force. Um, uh, the US uh, satellite constellation. And um, Let's see. 
Um, the, um, and those satellites have precisely known orbits, you know, that are basically calculated every and recalculated every couple of seconds. And um, uh, those radio transmissions from these satellites with precise timing and precisely known orbits give us the ability to locate the, the locate to locate our GPS antennas on the Earth or, or el elsewhere, is in, in fact. So um, by uh, very accurately measuring the distance from a satellite at a particular time, you know, from a, 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 uh, from a, a satellite with a known location, okay, and putting that together with the distance from uh, at least three or four uh, satellites, we can get our position, the position of our GPS receiver with, um, uh, with a process called trilateration, okay? So uh, one thing I want to make clear is that all we're doing in GPS is we're listening simultaneously, by the way, to the broadcasts of a number of satellites. So the satellites are doing the broadcasting and we're listening. Um, we're not having to, uh, uh, and that's why you can have a handheld GPS receiver. If you had to broadcast back to the, uh, back to the satellite, um, you know, like with a, a radio transponder, then that would be, um, uh, you know, then, then GPS receivers, you know, would weigh 100 pounds because you would need a lot of power. So trilateration, the measured distance between a satellite and, and GPS receiver defines a sphere centered on the satellite. Okay, that's what we get from the precise timing. The receiver could be located anywhere on the surface of that sphere. The intersections of three such spherical surfaces associated with three satellites cross only at, at only two points, only one of which is, is generally physically possible. Now, if, you, um, um, if you're looking for uh, GPS locations just in, in free space, you know, like you're in orbit, um, then you can't constrain yourself to the Earth's surface and um, uh, and that in that case, you have to um, uh, you have to have four satellites. Okay, so that that point of intersection, the physically possible one from three satellites, that's what gets displayed as the location of the GPS receiver. All right, and so there's an illustration of the spheres around um, around uh, three satellites, and the two possible points where they intersect. Um, the, uh, the oval here is where these two uh, spheres intersect. And then uh, the third sphere over here intersects that oval at just two, just two points. So that's the process of trilateration. Three distances, three lateral distances. Um, there's also the concept of uh, the dilution of precision, the DOP, okay? In the process of, of, of getting that, um, you know, every measurement, including the timing, the locations of the satellites, um, the time that, that's at our receiver, all of that has uncertainty. So, uh, you know, the locations of these, uh, the, the size of these spheres, right, and their locations, those have uncertainties. The intersections of the spheres thus have uncertainty. And you put all those uncertainties together and you get what's called a dilution of precision, okay? So the, uh, uh, in, in the process of trilateration, we get a, what's called a PDOP, uh, a position dilution of precision, which is the overall um, um, loss of precision, okay? It's kind of, you know, propagating the uncertainties all the way through. Um, and of course, uh, you know, since, uh, 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 you know, our GPS signals are electromagnetic waves, then they have to obey um, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the uncertainty principle. Uh, so we never get uh, absolute precision, you know. Um, we can't get precision out of, out of any waves that's down, out of any radio waves that's down to the micron, okay. And so these dots usually, usually describe some, you know, meters or maybe, or if we're lucky, centimeters of of uh, range of, of our, uh, of our uh, locations. 
So then uh, in, in your typical, uh, you know, high grade uh, G GPS um, app, you know, that's analyzing the, uh, the GPS data from your, um, um, from your uh, uh, receiver, uh, you'll see the H DOP, the V DOP, the T DOP, and the G DOP. Okay. And those are the uh, horizontal dilution of precision and the vertical dilution of precision. Now, those are the ones that we pay the most attention to, especially if we're doing gravity, we, we pay a lot of attention to the vertical uh, dilution of precision, the V DOP. And we can also get out the, the, uh, the time dilution and the, the, uh, the total geometric uh, DOP in both position and time. So, um, and, and this is uh, from a few years ago, but this still applies to uh, uh, getting um, uh, positions on your phones. Um, a DOP values below four, okay, uh, indicate excellent observation conditions. You've got enough satellites and you can see enough satellites. All right. Um, what that might mean for, uh, uh, for your phone is that uh, uh, generally you can get a position to, to four meters or better um, and, um, uh, and often quite a bit better, you know, often down at uh, one meter. Values above seven indicate poor conditions. And so the DOPS can deteriorate quite quickly uh, if for some reason um, you can't uh, see all, all the satellites you should be. Okay, here's another really important um, principle, especially for gravity. The vertical error, the, ver the V dot for estimated elevations are generally, um, you know, given uh, in, under most conditions, two to three times greater than the horizontal dot. Okay, the horizontal um, uh, uncertainties. Uh, again, uh, most people call these, uh, these uncertainties errors. I prefer to call them uncertainties. Um, you can, uh, there's a number of apps available. I got a free one called GPS Plan. Um, uh, you can look at um, the, you know, the GPS satellites that uh, are visible in the sky um, at, uh, at the current time or, or later. Um, uh, at, you know, earlier and later at any given date and time, any given location, okay? And um, uh, the, uh, the GPS plan app shows you a sky plot, uh, much like uh, the one you're seeing here from uh, older software, uh, which shows the, um, uh, the orbits of the GPS satellites. And, um, uh, and each satellite has a serial number, which is, uh, uh, given there. Um, I guess there are um, 32 uh, satellites in the US GPS uh, constellation. Um, and um, uh, one thing to notice, uh, if you look at enough of these um, uh, sky plots, you know, you'll see uh, west on the left, east on the right. So the circle around here, around the whole plot, that's the horizon. Okay. And um, we do not expect to see um, GPS satellites very close to the horizon because their broadcasts just aren't going to reach us through the trees and buildings if they're too close to the horizon. And then I think that's uh, 20 degrees up. And um, uh, I, I, let's see, uh, maybe 30 degrees up and, um, and 60 degrees up. And then in the center is the zenith, straight up, OK? So in, uh, uh, this was be from a location in, um, uh, in Northern Nevada. And you notice that uh, toward the north, no satellite orbits go, okay? And we're gonna find out more about that. So, you know, if you're at the North Pole actually, uh, there will be no satellites, no GPS satellites straight overhead. Uh, and this is true of uh, now there's not just the US uh, Space Force uh, GPS constellation of satellites. Um, there's a European constellation, there's a Russian constellation, there's a Chinese constellation, um, and there's a, uh, there's a couple more beyond that. Um, and, uh, you know, basically every, every country or, uh, or group of uh, countries that, uh, you know, is able to launch uh, satellites has GPS satellites now. And the GPS plan app allows you to 
uh, look at, at uh, include just the constellations you want. Uh, for instance, I don't know if I would really want to rely on the Russian constellation, um, uh, you know, very much. Um, so the, uh, uh, another thing that these apps do is they will uh, give you uh, the times at your location when you'll have the best and the worst coverage, okay? So here it's a projection, giving you a projection of PDOP, which is generally, you know, before four, but at some, at some times, you know, the, the PDOP increases uh, uh, greatly. And um, that's, uh, um, uh, you know, at those times, you're gonna have trouble. It just depends on where the satellites currently are in the sky, why, so if you're gonna be doing, um, you know, highly accurate GPS work, it, uh, it really behooves you to, before you go, uh, to uh, sit down with uh, uh, an app like GPS Plan and uh, figure out, um, you know, whether you're gonna have enough satellites and you're gonna get enough accuracy for what you're trying to do. You know, generally the, there's enough satellites in the sky now that uh, uh, there isn't much of a problem, but again, you might be relying on more Russian satellites than you'd prefer to. Okay, so back to uh, uh, trilateration. Um, the travel time of the radio signal from the satellite um, to receiver, okay, that times, uh, you take that travel time times the speed of light, right, which is so many, you know, kilometers per second, uh, and, and it does, you know, can delay through the uh, atmosphere with water vapor, it can uh, delay through the ionosphere, um, so it's, you know, times time, uh, you know, velocity is in, um, uh, the speed of light is in uh, uh, kilometers per second, and you multiply the speed of light times a time in seconds, right, and you get a, uh, uh, you get a distance in kilometers, okay? And so uh, that's, uh, uh, you know, that's, that's how we trilaterate the, and get the distance to the satellites. Uh, how do you get the, those, uh, those times, okay? Um, travel time determination requires a precise clock in both the satellites and the GPS receiver, okay? Now, the, the satellites have precise atomic clocks that are synchronized to master Earth-based clocks. And the physicists have used uh, these precise atomic clocks on the satellites to prove all kinds of concepts in um, general relativity, because they are precise enough to see the, uh, uh, the warping of space-time. Um, uh, and, and they're up in these uh, you know, very rapidly moving satellites. Uh, 18,000 miles an hour. Uh, our GPS receiver, okay, we could haul around a, a precise atomic clock, but that wouldn't be very practical. Um, and uh, uh, so we have to have a way, a very clever way of, of uh, uh, figuring out what the exact time is at our G GPS receivers. So, so, you know, we want X, Y, and Z, or, you know, say latitude, longitude, and elevation, right? That's what tri trilateration gives us. Uh, and so we have three unknowns, and we need three equations for that. And, uh, and then we can solve the equations for the, the three equations for the three unknowns. If we, if we regard the exact time at our GPS receiver as a fourth unknown, okay, um, then all we need is a fourth equation. And we can still solve the four equations coming from four satellites, okay? Uh, and, uh, and that's how we can get the precise time at our GPS receiver. We still gotta have those super accurate atomic clocks uh, orbiting the Earth in the GPS satellites. Um, GPS satellites, therefore, are some of the heavier satellites that, uh, that we have. Um, but uh, uh, we have, um, uh, we can have very light um, GPS receivers. Uh, like in your phone, it's, it's all on a very tiny chip. Uh, you know, not even as big as your, as your pinky uh, fingernail. So um, uh, uh, fundamentally, 
you know, whether we're, we're using standard GPS techniques or we're using, um, you know, waveform phase, the, uh, the accuracy of our distance measurements are linked to the, to the length of the analyzed waveform. How, how, long, how long is one cycle of waveform? And um, uh, if we're doing point positioning, um, as, as your phone does, your phone doesn't do carrier waveform, okay? Uh, we're looking at, um, at a whole bunch of um, uh, the, the cycle rate of the bits, okay, in the, um, uh, in the waveform, uh, you know, which is uh, the GPS signals broadcast by the satellites are, are very much like cell phone signals, which are very much like seismic vibra size uh, signals. Um, they're a coded sequence, okay? And, uh, and so there's a, you know, they carry, um, they carry uh, uh, ones and zeros in a, uh, in a pseudocode, uh, a pseudo random code sequence. Um, and, and, you know, Wi-Fi uses that, cell phones use that, and GPS uses it, okay? The, the, the length of a bit is, um, is 300, uh, 300 meters in that pseudo random uh, uh, numerical sequence. It's coming at one megahertz, okay? Um, and, uh, you know, generally our phones can look at it down to uh, one, one one hundredth bit fraction and get accuracies to uh, three meters, all right? The carrier phase, um, um, uh, 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 work uh, is looking at the, the waveform of the, of the carrier wave, as it's called. You know, the sort of tone that comes out of the satellite. And, and um, you know, it's all at the same frequency, but um, the, um, uh, it's like F, it's, it's, no, it's not like FM radio. Um, uh, and again, this is just like Wi-Fi and cell phone communication. Um, the, uh, the, the phases, uh, the troughs are flipped into peaks sometimes, and that's a different bit. Okay, but it's always it's always a carrier waveform of um, uh, at uh, 1.227 gigahertz. Okay, at least on on one of the, the frequencies broadcast by the satellites, and that has a length of 24.4 centimeters. Now we can do carrier waveform phase analysis down to one tenth of a cycle, which is 36 degrees instead of 360 degrees, and so we can actually see things that are as as precise as 2.4 centimeters. That's, that's like a, a theoretical limit for GPS. Now the GLONASS uh, uh, satellite constellation out of Europe, um, that has a higher uh, uh, carrier waveform uh, frequency, higher than 1.227 gigahertz. And so thus it is capable of, um, of more accurate um, uh, locations. Okay, and I need to... Um, <clears throat> let's see. So uh, uh, the Department of Defense uh, are the main ones responsible for monitoring the satellite's orbits, okay? Um, and, um, and the satellites, you know, where does our receiver get the orbits? I mean, we could get it off the internet. And in fact, uh, um, the Nevada Geodetic Lab broadcasts uh, their own solutions for satellite orbits. Uh, every day, uh, so we could get it there. But uh, let's say we're out in the in the field without an internet connection. How do we get it? Well, a, in addition to broadcasting um, the um, uh, the the time of the um, <coughs> the time of the uh, um, uh, the the uh, um, uh, the time codes uh, from each satellite. Each satellite also broadcasts its own orbit. So right there in the GPS broadcast, our receiver, you know, we don't have to have a, a phone connection or an internet connection or anything. You know, we can, out, we can use GPS out in the real wilds as long as we can see satellites in the sky. Uh, because the satellites are broadcasting their own orbits, they're broadcasting the time, and that's all the information we need to get a precise uh, location, okay? And this, this 30, 30 second long uh, data message, which comes from out of each satellite uh, um, uh, 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 periodically, 
you know, that it's waiting for that. That's why uh, you might remember from 10 years ago, it took a long time to get a, uh, a GPS fix uh, if you just, you know, when you first power up your receiver. Because uh, it's having to listen to all the satellite broadcasts that are 30 seconds long. And, uh, and only when it has all of them could it get a fix. Okay. So uh, uh, that's, um, you know, our, uh, nowadays it's, um, our, our GPS receivers in our phones are, are able to listen to those uh, um, messages from multiple satellites at once. So it never takes longer than 30 seconds to lock in our, our position. Um, at least if you, you know, if you have a late model phone. Um, okay, so there's, uh, there's problems with, uh, you know, these, these satellites are up there in the sky moving very fast. Um, and uh, so there's uh, 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 problems with the Doppler effect. Um, there are two frequencies uh, that the, that the uh, GPS satellites are broadcasting on. Um, they're, they're uh, you know, 1.2 1, 1. Uh, gigahertz L1 and the 1.6 gigahertz uh, uh, L2. Uh, on the uh, L1 frequency, the course acquisition code is transmitted uh, with um, 1,023 pseudo-random codes at a bit rate of one, about one megahertz. Okay, but the carrier frequencies are, are way up there at the gigahertz level. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, you know, a lot of the interesting mathematics of GPS is buried in these pseudo-random codes. And this is an incredible uh, technology um, that's, uh, you know, it's in every cell phone call, it's in every internet packet. Um, it's pretty amazing. Um, but I'm not going to uh, explain it. Okay. So um, uh, it's time to go to the questions. <clears throat> and um, okay. So uh, um, you can send your, your answer in a, in a private message to uh, Kellen, and uh, he'll speak up when he's got, uh, when he's got enough. Um, so uh, question set, you know, we're, going, we're rewinding here back to uh, uh, um, uh, question number 17-1, uh, which is on GPS positioning. GPS positions are based on a process of A, triangulation, B, radar returns, C, ground to satellite transmission, or D, trilateration. Give that a minute. All right, I got a majority. Uh, three A's, two C's, and two D's. Oh, wow. Um, okay, so um, the right answer is D, uh, trilateration. Um, so uh, uh, triangulation is um, uh, measuring uh, um, angles uh, against a uh, me measured baseline to get the, uh, 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 you know, from the measure the angle of a location, a new location from the ends of a, of a baseline of known uh, length. Uh, that's triangulation. And you end up with three angles there. Um, so, uh, uh, that's what you do with a, uh, a transit, um, a theodolite. Um, and you can do triangulation with uh, photographs. Um, uh, triangulation is um, the basis of um, uh, structure from motion, by the way. Because what we're doing is we're, we're uh, triangulating, you know, from the, uh, the videos, um, and every pixel, you know, uh, in a in a in a video has a known angle. Uh, and once you calibrate that, um, it's uh, quite accurate. Um, you know, with a high uh, a high um, a, 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 a camera with a large number of pixels. Um, okay, but that's not what GPS does. Um, radar returns. Um, the GPS satellites are, are just broadcasting. They're not listening for anything back from the ground. Um, there are other techniques um, 
which uh, use uh, radar um, to get the shape of the Earth. Um, uh, ground to satellite transmission is not necessary for uh, GPS. Um, so the, uh, the, uh, that's why the answer is trilateration. And I'm glad that some of you got that. <laughs> okay. Uh, question 17-2, dilution of precision, DOP errors. The vertical dilution of precision and error are usually A, less than the horizontal dilution of precision and error, B, about the same as the horizontal dilution of precision and error, C, greater than the horizontal dilution of precision and error, D, unrelated to the horizontal dilution of precision and error. Give that a, a couple of minutes. Well, I only got four out of 10, but they're all C's. And, the, and that's correct. So that's great news. Um, yeah, I think I said, uh, um, I tried to say uh, during the lecture that um, the, uh, the VDOP is uh, three or four times generally greater than the HDOP. Uh, any questions about that? I just like to comment the way you can think about it is uh, if you if you have a you're at a at a location that you want to record the position of and you're going to acquire maybe a 60 seconds to between one and two minutes worth of readings and average all of those that'll improve your location and so say if you're getting a measurement every second um, that it's going to give you a location every second that it will be averaged, right? So just reiterating that. And so what that would look like, the point cloud of every measurement, every one second, it would kind of look like a football before a team is ready to kick, you know, an extra point or do the kickoff. It's like a football tipped up on end, yeah, uh, waiting for the kick or the distribution of those points. So longer, in the vertical or, or wider more error uh in the vertical along the vertical axis and less error along the horizontal axis the the x y uh locations are more tightly constrained the vertical is a little more spread out like the football so yeah whatever yeah. that's worth that's a good way to think of it was there another comment Okay, let's go on to the third question. Um, all right, question 17-3, orbits and time. Satellite orbits and time are A, just downloaded from the internet, B, irrelevant to GPS locations, C, broadcast from each satellite, D, broadcast over AM radio sidebands. Uh, let's just give that a minute. All right. Well, they basically uh, uh, just about all got it right because the, uh, the uh, orbits and, and uh, times are broadcast from each satellite. That's uh, really fundamental. That's, that's, that's the amazing fact that allows GPS to be useful. Okay, last question. We got, just barely got time for it. Question 17-4, carrier frequency. The carrier wave frequencies broadcast by the US GPS satellites are at A, one to two hertz, B, one to two kilohertz, C, one to two megahertz, D, one to two gigahertz. Um, and let's, let's give them 30 seconds on this. All right. You know, these guys are, are, not only are they studying, they're also paying attention. This is great. Um, because D is the, uh, is the right answer. 